One thing you can't say about Linux is that it lacks distributions and variations. And unfortunately, that also stretches to the package managers. I mean, just look at all these. What a mess. But there is one operating system that keeps things simple. FreeBSD. You can choose ports or packages. In FreeBSD, there are two ways that we can install software. We can install it via ports, or we can install it via packages. With ports is a way that you can install your software, that you compile yourself and choose all the options that you wish. Packages are pre-compiled software, and they are also the results of building ports, but they use the options the port maintainer thinks will be most useful to the widest variety of people. And then they get bundled up into a package that makes it easier to install. When you first install FreeBSD, it doesn't ship with the PKG manager installed. Surprisingly, the first time you try to install or update some software, PKG will prompt you to install the package management tool. Right, so as you can see from this little frozen screenshot, I ran PKG update and it says the package management tool is not yet installed on your system. Do you want to fetch and install it now? And of course we press yes. Then it bootstraps PKG from the internet. It downloads it and installs it. You can also just use PKG bootstrap really. And once it's finished, it will tell you there's 31,612 packages processed and all repositories are up to date. Right, so the first command that we're going to run, or the first command I'm going to show you involving PKG is PKG update. Now, if you've already run it once and it's updated, you'll get a little message saying all repositories are up to date. You can force an update as well. So PKG update hyphen F and force it to pull down the latest list. And we've got 31,788 packages processed. Very nice. So let's clear the screen. The next is PKG search, or if you want to search for a package and you're not quite sure of its name, then this is a really flexible tool. Say for instance I want to search for a player, and a PKG search player will bring in not a massive list, but it's, it's a sizable list. If you're not sure of what you're wanting, in this case I actually want backer M player, which is a QT5 multimedia player based on libmpv. You can query a package before it's installed, just to make sure it's the one that you want before you actually bother to, uh, bother to install it. You PKG search hyphen capital R and then the package name. And that will bring up some information before you actually install. And then we're just gonna pipe it into uh, less to stop it from scrolling down the screen too much. Right, and right from the beginning it tells you back at mplay, it's a multimedia, version number, and then down there is a description that says back at MP3 player is a plea and open source cross-platform player and enjoyable environment. So yes, that's the one we want. Even though we know which one we want to install, say for instance you knew part of the name. So PKG search, oh I don't know, back, and you will do a search and it will bring up all the packages with BAK in them. It's kind of flexible. Right, we're actually going to install uh, the one that we want. And the commands are all common sense, really. Like they've got update, search, and install. So if we do pkg install backer m player, it will do as it says. It will install. It will pull in some dependencies and uh, the things that we need to get it going. But we're just going to select no on that because I want to show you there's different ways to install. You can, rather than install it, you can fetch it and it will. Save it to your hard drive, and then you can install it manually later, if you wish. So PKG fetch back at mplayer, and it will tell you that it's just gonna, it's gonna fetch one package. But it has some dependencies, so we just uh, type no on that. And there is a way to fetch the package with all the dependencies it needs if you PKG fetch hyphen D, and all that will fetch the dependencies and the package, so you can install it offline later. So if we type PKG fetch hyphen d as an option and backer and player again this is slightly 
more packages to be downloaded. In this case, it's 155. So there's quite a few there. So we're just going to uh, type no on that again. Don't we? We'll, we'll get to install it in a bit. So just clear the screen. When you fetch the package, either on its own or with all the dependencies, it will store it into the var cache pkg directory. And you can see what's already stored there if you ls forward slash var forward slash cache forward slash pkg. If there is anything stored in there at the moment, it will show it. And things get stored here just in the normal downloading and installing of, of packages anywhere. So if we pkg fetch back at mplayer on its own, the single file, and we type yes, it's downloaded. And if we search the directory again, there's the MBSD games, as well as the back at mplayer. You can clean this if it gets too full. You pkg clean iPhone air and it will, it will just clean the entire lot. If you want it to. And there's nothing stored there now. So I'll just clear again. So we're actually going to install this piece of software. I bet you're sick of seeing it. So pkg install. Back air and player. And give it a minute. There we go. So we'll just type yes and it will install it and all the dependencies. Sometimes it will tell you that something needs to be reinstalled in case it's PKG itself needs to be reinstalled. Right, so we just, uh, yeah, we'll proceed with this. Type yes. And there we go. See, sometimes as well, you will get a conflict with a program that it's trying to install with one that's already installed in your system. So as you can see at the bottom, I'm not going to mention it because uh, the powers that be might get a bit funny, but you can see it's, uh, it's a certain kind of um, downloading program uh, that conflicts with one that's already installed. It's a different, different version, but does the same thing. So what you need to do is you need to install the one that's already installed if you want to carry on. And this is a good opportunity to show you PKG delete and how you uninstall packages. So you do PKG delete and you can uh, you can just highlight the name or highlight the entire version if you want and you delete and it will delete that as well as any dependencies. And so now that's been deleted, we can reinstall and try again and there we are. Right, some extra commands, which really does tie in with what we've just done, is pkg lock. Now, pkg lock, say for instance, in the previous one when I uninstalled that downloader and it wanted to also uninstall MPV, pkg lock could have helped with that. And to see if there are any locked packages, pkg lock iPhone L will show you. And at the moment, there aren't any locked ones. So we'll just clear that. Right, so what we'll do is that we'll lock back at end player. When you lock uh, a package, it will prevent that package from being deleted and also prevent it from being upgraded. So if, say for instance, you know, you're upgrading the system, some libraries change or but this one piece of software you know will work and you want to stop it from being upgraded or it's got features that you don't want and you prefer the one that you've already installed. I once did that with uh, Caden Live. Then PKG lock will hold it. There is a problem with that sometimes, of course. It's... Uh, it can become outdated if everything else gets updated around it. But, you know, it can be useful. So, pkg lock, and then back at end player. We'll lock it, and it says uh, lock this package, and yes, it's already done. And we can list what's been uh, currently in the lock thing, and there we go. And, of course, to unlock it is pkg unlock. Again, it's it's all common sense commands. It's um, They're not cryptic, and I, I admire pkg for that. PKG info. Uh, well, like we did at the beginning when we wanted to know what packet M player was before we installed it, PKG info will actually show you information on the installed package. It gives you the same information as previously. It even tells you what license it's under. It's very nice. So it's all good. Next is PKG audit. 
quite useful if you want to find out if there are any packages installed in the system which you may want to perhaps remove until they're fixed. And we have, oh yeah, lib sound file, okay. Seems to be the only one. Multiple vulnerabilities, yeah, that's that's right. So if you could live without that, then maybe you uh, should in uninstall. If not, then just leave it. I'm just going to leave it on there until it's fixed. And finally, PKG update. We've already seen this one at the beginning, but it also comes with a companion, and that's PKG upgrade. So if using PKG, you pull in the latest uh, list, you could then run PKG upgrade, and it will go through all the ones that you can upgrade. Here is the final most important command, and that's man PKG. That's the PKG user manual. So I'm going to pipe it into less and just show you this. Every command, every switch, information about it is available on this. It's a wonderful thing, is the man pages. And the FreeBSD man pages are actually uh, almost a work of art. It tells you everything you need to know and also different uh, PKG commands that you can look up later. But everything is here to get you going. And lots of commands that I haven't even covered. So there you go. So man PKG is perhaps the most important command. You should always consult your man pages. It's good to go online. But why do that when you can first look at what's available locally? Anyway, I hope this was useful. Thanks for watching. And I'll catch you next time. This and every other video on my channel has been made using FreeBSD and open source software.